So I'm really pleased to invite Mike Blackadder, who's the Chief Customer Officer for Artesian and a few members of his team. Thank you, Edie. Uh, good afternoon. Um, yes, for those of you who haven't met me before, my surname is Blackadder. Uh, but I'm glad to say we do have some cunning plans to share with you this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> do you think I've used that before? Right. So, um, to going with the theme that we've had so far today, uh, I'm going to talk about evolution of a different type. So you can't help but notice in the world around us how things that fundamentally were designed to do one thing, in this case, drive around in circles, they evolve over time, they become sleeker, faster, sometimes safer. And these things, there are entities, there are people, there are processes, uh, there are technologies that evolve over a period of time in an effort to make our world a better place and to make our lives easier. Now sometimes these evolutions are unexpected. <laughs> Sometimes they're unwanted, um, some, some may say. But particularly in the technology space, which is where uh, Artesian fits, um, you as consumers, you're cons consistently asking us to, to innovate. Imagine, would Apple be the same company if they were still working with the PowerBook that they released 20 years ago? Can you believe that was an Apple laptop? It's amazing, isn't it? But the thing that's interesting about technology as it evolves is that it happens incrementally. And we look back over time and it seems huge, but you know, we change our phone every two or three years. Um, and each time we upgrade it, we think, well, yeah, that's nice, we've got a few extra things. And it's only when we find one rattling around in our bottom drawer that was 10 years ago, we pick it out and we think, I remember when I got that, I thought that was amazing, but now it just looks so dated. Things evolve massively over time, but you don't really see them as they're happening. And the same has been true with the evolution of uh, the way that Artesian has, uh, has evolved over time. Um, we've been on a, uh, on a mission. Every three to four months, you, you get a new release of the service with new functionality in it. And it's only really when you start looking back that you notice how much things have really changed. Now this, to give you a case in point, this was Artesian about eight years ago. Um, at this point, We'd done some of the really difficult stuff behind the scenes of indexing the internet to make it useful from a business context rather than the sort of keyword way that most uh, search engines and other, uh, other business tools were using. And we presented it in a, uh, what we call a wall of news. And buried within there, there was this, uh, there's a filter button and that's where you could set your, uh, your preferences for uh, you know, what companies and topics and things you're interested in. And it was smart, you know, it kind of it did the job, um, but it was hard to, uh, it was a bit hard to use and we didn't really get lots of traction until we started to give people control. And for those of you in the room who use the service, you'll recognize the concepts here of just giving people the ability to add companies to lists and then start monitoring them. We suddenly found that hundreds and, and then thousands of people started to use this because it was genuinely useful to them. They were using it for tracking their existing portfolios and for finding new companies as well. So between then and now, if you look back at that now, firstly, it looks very dated. Secondly, it's mainly just driven around news and not a huge amount else. So between then and the service that we know and love now, the fundamentals have stayed the same, but behind the scenes and also in the, in the front end, lots of things have changed. I'll just give you a 60 second kind of run through of, uh, of how it's changed. So we started by adding company data into the platform. We gave you the ability to see those changes over time through alerts because that's also another reason to engage. We brought in people data as well. We, uh, we gave you the ability to build prospector uh, lists, so uh, to, to build lists of companies that match your profile. And then we started bringing in the news to, uh, to, so that you could make those lists even more, uh, more relevant. Then we started saying, okay, well, if you're engaging with customers, you need to understand their markets. So we brought in uh, market news into the service. Uh, we made it easy to, uh, to pull in social media. We cross-referenced social media with company directors so you can see their, their own feeds and, see, and engage with them in, in the right kind of levels. All of these things have just been drip, drip feeding in. We integrated with CRMs. We built mobile apps. Uh, we even took the whole app and made it work on your phone. I don't know if you know this, but you can just go straight into your phone 
put in your URL and you can uh, um, uh, and you can sign into Artesian and get almost all of the stuff that you can get online. It's great for uh, um, if you're at a networking dinner or if you want to bore someone at a dinner party about the company they work for. All of that stuff has happened incrementally over time. Uh, and so if you compare where we were with where we are now, things have moved on a lot. Over that time, the only constant has been change. And we're really proud of the fact that, you know, this is, this is a fairly busy market. Other companies have come and gone that have tried to do, do these sort of things. Um, but we, because we've got this constant focus on innovation, you're going to hear more about that in a minute. We've got this focus on innovation that is basically meaning that when you spend money with us, we're not just thinking about you as a customer now. We're already thinking about where we think you're likely to be in two or three years' time. Um, so it's a, it's a long-term thing that we've been driving all the way through that time. And that brings us on to... Uh, the, uh, the theme of this afternoon's presentations. Uh, so we're going to cover off some of the things that Andrew talked about this morning. In a second, I'm going to introduce you to Matt Elson, VP of Risk Solutions. He's going to give us a demonstration of the, uh, the Risk and Compliance Hub. But first, I'm going to hand over to Rich Clark, who's going to talk about the latest innovations, just a little sneak preview of some of it, from the Customer Engagement Suite. Rich. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike says, I'm Rich Clark. I'm the VP of Product Management at Artesian. My role is to work with customers to understand your needs uh, in order to create a plan for what we do next, a roadmap for what we do next. And today I'm going to tell you what's in our, uh, in our next release, which is going to be our, our, our spring release, which will come out in the spring. So <laughs> it's going to all be about prospecting. Um, we're going to introduce some innovative new ideas to help you find your market, find your customers, to create a prospect list with laser-guided precision. But first, why are we doing this? Right. So there is no classification system out there at the moment that enables you to target companies really accurately. So for example, if we want to target construction companies who focus on sust sustainable uh, construction methods or uh, manufacturers of clean energy products or tech companies shipping products built about around blockchain. You can't do this using traditional methods. So what's our big idea? Well, actually, there's two big ideas. First, what we call Artesian Business Categories, or ABC. It's a new simplified system of cat for categorizing businesses. Uh, intuitive, simple to work with, in a way what uh, SIT codes should be, for those of you who are familiar with SIT codes. But however good they are, categorization systems can only go so far. The world is much more complex and ever-changing than you could possibly categorize using a system. So we've introduced a second new innovation that we call Artesian Buzzwords. This is a unique new solution for identifying companies based on what they say about themselves online. So we're collecting, lifting, and analyzing words that companies use to describe themselves online, social media, and using their websites. And we bring that to bear inside Artesium. So in order to find companies more accurately. So I'll, sh I'll show you a few examples just to bring it to life. Um, so if I can just get my mouth working. So uh, this is Steve. Uh, Actually, it's not. It's just some bloke I found on Google. But we're going to call him Steve. Um, he works for an insurance company. Um, and his company is running a direct ma marketing campaign uh, offering discounted site insurance to construction companies who are dedicated to sustainable living. So it's quite a, quite a specific campaign that they want to run. So how can Steve find his market? Well, this is Artesian Prospector. For those of you who are familiar with it, you'll, know, you'll be familiar with it. For those of you who don't, don't use this yet, this is a list building capability to find your market. Um, and you can see Steve's already narrowed his, his search to the southeast, but he's still talking about something like a million and a half companies. Um, but he's going to open up the industry tab and he's going to find two new features. One of them is artesian business categories, and the other one is company buzzwords. So how can he find these green construction businesses? So he's going to start with artesian business categories, and he's just going to type in construction. And that will lead into construction generally, construction of buildings, construction of infrastructure, other kinds of construction. 
And if he was to dig into this a little bit more, there's another level of uh, detail that he could dig into. But he's going to satisfy himself with companies that are in building construction. He's still looking at 30,000 uh, companies uh, in the southeast. And they don't really do what he wants to, wants to target mostly. So this is where Artesian buzzwords comes into its own. Now that he's narrowed it to the right kinds of companies, he wants to narrow it to the kinds of companies who are doing, who are talking about and doing the kinds of things that, he, that, that, that he's interested in so that he can sell his product to them. So um, Passive House, for those of you don't, who don't know, is a rigorous uh, standard for energy efficient construction, essentially. So any construction company that's talking about Passive House is almost certainly in his sweet spot of, sweet spot of companies. So he's put in Passive House and he's going to select that. And suddenly his list has gone down to the very small niche group of companies who are working in this kind of space. And we know that they are because this, this is coming directly from their online presence. Okay, this is what they are talking about. It, they're placing themselves into this niche effectively. So uh, Steve's a happy guy. Um, this, is, this is Hannah, really. Um, Hannah works for a bank that has a strategy to increase its footprint in green industries. Um, how can Hannah find her market? Well, again, she's using Artesian Prospector. And she's looking today at the plumbing and heating industry, installers and manufacturers of heating equipment. She's only really interested in companies that are growth industries, growth companies. And she's put in a whole bunch of buzzwords. She happens to know that these things, uh, uh, ground source heat pumps, air source heat pumps, and so on, that are going to be talking about uh, uh, manufacturers making these kinds of devices are exactly what she wants to target. And for good measure, she's used hotness to prioritize the award-winning companies to the top of her list as well. So Hannah's pretty happy because she's found her market too. And finally, uh, I've decided this guy's called Ryan. and. Uh, He's an investor in a VC, um, and he's looking to just invest in cool tech startups. So very simple. Now, he's also selected the, the Southeast because he believes quite wrongly that uh, the Southeast is the only place you're going to find cool tech startups. But he's looking at companies that are new, so less than two years old. And he's put in some cool tech buzzwords to find the sort of companies, new companies talking about these kinds of things. So he can go and look into these companies, start talking to them, find out what they need from an investment perspective. So two big ideas, working in concert, artesian business categories and uh, company buzzwords, enabling you to create prospect lists with what I call ruthless precision. But that's not all that's going into the spring release. I'm going to touch on a few other things that we're doing as well. Um, primarily in Prospector and, and the, the business development space. Um, some of your products may only be appropriate for companies uh, who are registered businesses. Um, some of our filters are based on estimated figures, so we're going to allow you to get rid of those companies if, that's, if that works for you. We're going to let you, let you filter on export turnover as well to find companies that are doing business abroad or have a, have a, uh, um, a, 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 a footprint abroad. When it comes to exporting data, you can already export people data, but we're going to let you export just the kind of people data that interests you. And we're also going to let you exclude people who have the TPS flag set, people who don't want, want you to cold call them. And finally, uh, our topic categorization is now getting very, very successful. We've got about 2,000 topics now, um, victims of our own success. But we're going to make it much easier for you to find and refine your news service by searching for and, and digging into topics in that way. So that's the spring release. Just very briefly looking beyond that, um, we're going to be expanding our international capabilities. Now, we already source news from global news sources, and we have a US, a Canada, and a Singapore instance of Artesian already. Um, but during the course of the next year to year and a half, we're going to start expanding outwards from here, and you'll be able to start getting news and insights about global entities. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, I'll be asking you, our customers, to help us shape this investment, because um, that way we can make it relevant to you and, and, and help you guys to be successful in that space. So that's all from me. I'm now going to introduce um, our VP of uh, Risk Solutions, Matt Elsom. Um, Matt's going to take you through some exciting new capability we've been working on that Andrew talked about earlier, the Artesian Risk and Compliance Hub. Over to you. Cool. Thank you.
Thank you, Richard. So earlier on, you've seen Andrew and Jeff talk a little bit about some of what we've been doing to push our functionality into the credit and KYC area. And right now, I'm going to show you a brief demonstration so we can kind of bring it alive a little bit. Now, actually, I'm not doing the demonstration. Mike's going to control the cursor, so my creative freedom is slightly constrained. Um, probably well advised. Um, first and foremost, what you need to know is that the functionality we've created here is delivered through the current platform that many of you are very familiar with. And if you have this functionality switched on, you will now see these two new buttons that will be both screen and track at the top here. Now, for my example, we're going to use carpet right. Uh, if there is anyone here today from carpet right, <laughs> please don't feel embarrassed. I'm sure your synthetic floor coverings are wonderful. Um, and also, I'm going to assume the role of a business development or relationship manager for this case. Uh, I've been thinking about selling to carpet right, and I've heard a few bad things in the press recently, and I'm sure it's just hearsay and scurrilous rumour, but before I invest time in selling to them, I want to screen them. Now, when I screen, what I'm doing is pulling data from my organisation's current sources that would be used in the credit and the KYC area. We, we, in this instance, we've pulled data from Refinitiv, which is the new name for Thomson Reuters World Check. We also have LexisNexis and other KYC providers available. We've also gone to unstructured data sources. And then what we've done is we've applied the policies of our company to that data in order to create flags which can alert me to risk. And we can see right now that Carpet Right PLC has some problems. Uh, other static inducing surfaces are available. Um, and as we click into that, we can, see that, we can see the nature of the different flags that have been created. And that's the interpretation layer applied by applying policies to data that brings this. And if we look into the CCJ or County Court Judgment section, uh, we, can look at, we, we can look right into this flag and we can see four main elements. Firstly, there are actions. We're able to use our policies to create guidelines for specific employees with specific roles on specific types of flags. Secondly, we have flag detail. Now, the sharp-eyed amongst you will note that two of these CCJs are more than three years old. Of course, in our decision engine, we could have created a rule that would determine recency and value of CCJ that we're interested in. We have a collaboration area here where I can, if I want, include someone else on this flag and I may want to ask someone for some advice or I may want to get authorization from someone. And finally, we have the activity area. Everything that I've done, every comment made, everyone I've involved <coughs> is now kept here for audit purposes. Now along the top here, we have all of the data that I captured in detail. And I can look into any of these if I want to drill into some more data. So if I look at the credit and risk tab, I can see that despite Carpet Right having had some problems, actually their, their payment behaviour has improved recently. And it might just be that some of that restructuring that they've been doing has, has, has done some good. And I may actually be able to transact with them. I can also look at the adverse media that's available using the media tab. And uh, this is looking at all kinds of adverse media, reputational, financial, potential fraud. Um, unfortunately, again, the sharp-eyed amongst you will know I didn't filter out weak double entendres, but um, it's all there if I want to see it. Now, having screened carpet right, if I now decide that I would like to proceed with an application or uh, an onboarding process, I have a lot of the data that my organisation wants already here. And so I'm able to simply export that into an onboarding platform and save that work needing to be done again. It's all in one place, I just push it through. Now on to tracking. Um, given that my organisation has said before we take on a company I want to look at certain data sources and apply certain rules to that data, it stands to reason that if that is also available in real time on an ongoing basis, I want to know if there have been any significant negative changes to that position. And I want to be able to track organisations and send flags according to that data and policy to the relevant staff. 
And then in turn, if I'm now sending alerts to my staff and flags, I also might want to know whether they're looking at them, are they dealing with them, and all of that can be monitored. And I can monitor that on a team basis, or I can go right down to an individual and see how they're doing with their alerts. So in summary, we've been really careful here. We've not tried to replace uh, a centralized credit risk or KYC function here. What we're trying to do is create no surprises functionality. If I'm going to go and invest some time selling to an organization, I want to know what I might find later on. I don't want any surprises to upset my process. In short, I want to know more, I want to know earlier, and I want to save time. Thank you, Matt. That's it. <laughs> Matt, just before we lose you, um, the uh, risk and compliance to a lot of people in the room, it, it kind of it smacks of banking. We've given a kind of a banking example here. Uh, there are people from a variety of industries here. Is this just a banking product? Well, because we've built a decision engine that includes a flexible data layer, that sounds quite tech, I know. Um, <laughs> What that enables us to do is go for as many or as few data sources as we want and to implement really sophisticated rule sets to that or really quite basic rule sets if that's appropriate. So the example we showed was probably something more akin to what a banker might want to do. But any organization whose client transaction holds inherent risk might want to look at, say, the CCJ, the credit risk position of an organization, before interacting. And this services for those people as well. Okay? Thanks for answering that blatantly loaded question, Matt. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> so um, Matt's going to be around for the rest of the day uh, and is more than happy to talk to you. As I um, mentioned earlier, there's, uh, there's, there's lots to the IP that we're building behind the scenes um, for uh, uh, behind risk. Can we switch back to the slides, please? Um, and so uh, there's some really exciting things that you're going to be seeing coming, uh, coming down the line. Now, just before we wrap up, just one final thing, another, another piece of innovation. If you've been an Artesian customer for a while, which I know uh, a lot of you in the room have, then you'll know that you never have to worry about enablement. Um, you don't have to worry about paying for enablement. It's all included and bundled within the Artesian service. And, and that doesn't matter whether it's face-to-face -face anywhere in the country, uh, or if you want to run webinars or you want, prefer people to do it uh, uh, self-paced in their own time. And that's all included and you'll know that there's a, there's a rich seam of, uh, of those materials available there. Now, there's something new that we've started this year um, and it's based on the fact that we, uh, we got used to going into somewhere, someone makes the de decision to, uh, uh, to implement our teaching across their organisation and then we have to help them with this uh, with this challenge of rolling it out. You've got a big group of people sometimes across an organization, sometimes uh, geographically spread, that you need to spread the word. So you've got your vision of what you, uh, what you want to do and how you want your salespeople to behave, and you've got to spread that out amongst the word. And we do that. You know, we, uh, we work with your people and your rollout people to, uh, to enable the, uh, the folks across your organization. But of course, one of the things is that some of those people that we're enabling are leaders in themselves. <coughs> And these leaders are useful to you in a number of ways. Firstly, they're much more likely to understand the thing that you're trying to do. They're also very good conduits for your idea to, uh, uh, to bleed it out to the organization. Um, and, uh, but, um, and, and also, we've got a bunch of things built into the Artesian service that is specifically designed for leaders to, uh, to help them to, uh, to monitor the things that their teams are doing and to give them little tips along the way. So um, the problem that we have is that those leaders are time poor and so they don't always have the, the, uh, the time to, uh, to go to the, the big rollouts and so sometimes we end up in this situation where we have fantastic adoption at the, uh, uh, at the roots level but very little awareness amongst management. So to help you to, uh, to communicate that better, we've introduced an Artesian Leadership Programme. Um, it's really just a very much cut down way of getting people into Artesian uh, it uh, has got, we will we'll communicate whatever message you want in terms of the message that should be communicated to the field and we we'll then give people a few, just a few bits of insights as to how they can, uh, some techniques they can use to, uh, uh, to manage their team and show them how they're using Artesian. Now, if you're interested in that or in anything else that you've seen this afternoon, 
uh, then um, you've got a whole plethora of, uh, of artesian people here for you. Um, Rich, as you mentioned earlier, is specifically interested in talking to you if, uh, if you have a, uh, a vision that involves uh, in, uh, having people who are tracking companies outside the, uh, the UK or internationalizing the service. We're very interested in the ways that people are doing that so we can make sure the service gets crafted in the right way as, it, uh, as we continue on that, that path of evolution. We're also going to be running a, uh, a beta of the company Buzzwords functionality that, uh, that you saw earlier. Uh, and so we'll be interested in anyone who's, who'd be interested in taking part in that. Um, Matt is a risk expert and uh, can talk the hind legs off a donkey, but in a very interesting way uh, about the, uh, about the topic, topic. So, uh, so please approach him if you've got any kind of questions about the things that are going on there. But also, uh, all of the customer success managers are, uh, are here uh, together with um, other uh, contacts that you probably had, and in fact, some of the support people as well who you may have uh, liaised with uh, in your day-to-day -day activity. Please ask anyone a question, and um, uh, feel free to approach me in the, uh, in the time afterwards. It's what these days are for. It's all, it's all about networking. So I hope that's been, uh, that's been useful for you. That's your product update for this afternoon. Look forward to working with you all uh, again and ongoing over the course of the next year. Thank you.